all right hello everybody today I'm gonna show you how to um, use the painter but of course first you need to download the software so for that you need to go to my blog 3d stereophoto.blogspot.com in the search box you put the painter and you click on the result this one and here there is a link uh, for downloading uh, the painter so you just click on that it's going to take you to Dropbox in Dropbox there's going to be a download download link upper right you click on that and you say direct download so Yeah, you're going to get a warning about uh, that it may be dangerous, but you can just ignore that. So keep. So now if you uh, go to do your download directory, double click on that. And you, I'm just going to install it right there. But of course, you can install it wherever you want. okay so here is the directory so this one this is the executable and this is a test test case uh, an example on how to on how to use the painter so what you want to do first is go into this guy we're going to make sure first you got to make sure first that the software is uh, running properly on your machine so you go into uh, this guy the painter.bat, the batch file, you edit it. Here I'm using Notepad++, but you can use whatever editor you want. So here it is. So you need to change the path to the executable. So to do that, let me show you. So the executable is uh, in the directory, this one. So we go there, that's the executable. So what you do is that you want to copy this, this directory here. So to do that, click on that down arrow and then copy this guy here. So you copy that. So now I go back into my, uh, into my editor. So I need to get rid of this and paste what I copied. okay so that's the proper path so of course on your machine depending on where you install the software it's going to be different so here i'm just gonna save save all and get out so now when you go into that sample directory if you click on this it should run i'm not going to do it now but make sure you do so that that way you, 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 are, you are sure that uh, the installation is correct. So now if you want to uh, have the painter work on your, on your own image, what you can do is that you uh, go back up and you copy that sample uh, directory. So copy, paste you rename it whatever let's say my stuff so now you can you go in there this is the input file for the painter and that's your batch file so you get rid of all that stuff and the content image you put your own image and then you double click on the batch file and that way you can run the painter on your own on your own images all right now let's try to focus on the uh, the input file which is here the painter underscore input.txt let's open this guy and let me try to explain how it works so that first line here that's your reference image your photo. 
that you want to render with the painter. The next two here, this is the initial canvas. So uh, there are three directories with canvases that you can use. There's canvas 01, which contains a white canvas, canvas 02, which contains a gray canvas, and canvas 03, which contains a black canvas. Here I'm using a white canvas, but if your reference photograph has a lot of white in it, you may want to switch to uh, gray or black. That's the only reason you would want to change here. Okay, so the next number of brushes, here I have six, and for each brush there is a line, so you should have six lines here. Six. So for each line you have the brush radius, Next one is the uh, opacity strength, bumpity strength, error threshold, uh, grid size factor, and then the brush, uh, brush index. So after that, you have the two, this number of uh, brush textures. And for each brush texture, you have two files, two images. So here I have a total of four, two times two. So here I'm using brush 01 and I'm also using brush 01 underscore half width. So that brush index is an index into those. So this is 0, brush 0, and this is brush 1. Meaning that when, I'm, uh, when uh, the painter is uh, working on this, those five, those five brushes is going to use this one, 0. And when he work in, when he's working on that last one, he's going to use this one here, index one. Then you have your outputs. So you have the uh, the uh, the canvas itself, the painted image, if you will. And the next one is what I call the bumpy image, which is uh, uh, actually a bump map, which you can use. To give texture to your canvas but uh, I mean you don't have to give texture to your canvas so you can just use this guy without using that bumpy map but we'll uh, we'll come back on this later okay so now let me try to explain what the opac opacity strength bumpy strength and all those things here uh, mean so uh, first I need to explain uh, what the brush looks like the brush that are in there so let's go back to my blog okay so here I sh there should be a picture of the brush so this is what the opacity image is for the brush zero one so when the brush with some color is applied to the canvas um, this is what is being applied with so if it's pure white you are applying the color uh, at full opacity if it's gray you are at 50 percent opacity so that you can see what's uh, you're gonna see what's underneath so it's like a layering or in oil painting lingo glazing you can see what's underneath if, and if it's uh, pure black, it's going to be purely transparent. So you, you, you see everything that's underneath. So that's what opacity means. So now if I go back to that. Uh, so this is the opacity strength at uh, 1.0 here. But you can change it. Uh, you can put, uh, let's say, 0 0.5 if you want to have half opacity. So you want to have something that, uh, when you apply the brush strokes, it's more transparent than what uh, it's in there, the, in the brush texture images. So you can make it uh, more transparent or you can make it more opaque if you use 1.1 or 1.2, whatever. The same thing for the, the bumpy, which I what, what I call the bumpy, which is the, the bump map for each brush stroke. So this number, the 50, which is the uh, error threshold, 
uh, I think I kind of need to kind of to explain how the how the painter works. So let me go back to my tablet. So yeah, so that's your image. Let's see the reference photo, and then the painter. You basically subdivide that image into uh, grid cells. So let's say this is a, a grid cell, a square. What the painter does, he looks, he compares the uh, the median average color in the canvas, and he compares that to the average color in the photo. And if the difference in color is bigger than this number in the RGB uh, color uh, space, then he's gonna then he's gonna paint uh, a brush stroke. Let's say he's gonna put something like that, a brush stroke here. So he's gonna put the brush stroke in there. So uh, this number, the higher the number, the coarser your painting is gonna look like, and uh, the lower the number, the tighter it's gonna be. Now let me try to explain that grid size factor, the 0 0.5 here. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go back to the tablet here. So, let's assume that the grid size factor is 1. And uh, this is the uh, your, your reference photograph. So, the grid that the painter builds is something like that. And the size of each grid cell here is uh, two times the radius plus one. Same thing here, it's a square. So what happens is that the, the painter, for each brush radius, it just goes through all those grid cells and he puts a brush stroke. So maybe he puts one like this. Then here he puts one like this. Here same thing, something like that. And maybe here it does nothing. Then if you put a grid size factor of 0.5, what's gonna happen is that the uh, those grid cells are gonna over overlap. So they're gonna look like this. It's gonna be one here, then it's gonna overlap. It's gonna be another one here. Then another one here. Then another one here. So basically you're doubling the number of possible brush stroke. So like here, uh, he's putting a brush stroke here. Then you have another one here, possible brush stroke for that grid cells. So now he's gonna put another one here. Then the next one is here. And he's, he can over, he may overlap. So you have basically more coverage. So this is why I use 0.5 here. And you can use pretty much any value between uh, 0.5 and 1. I wouldn't go past 1 and I wouldn't go past 0.5 the other way. So, yes, yeah, so those values for the brushes, they depend uh, on your taste, of course, but also on the size of the uh, reference photograph. Here, my content image is uh, the the largest dimension is uh, 2048 pixels. So that's why I'm using uh, those values here for the uh, the brush uh, radiuses, starting at 128, going all the way to 8. If your image is uh, smaller, then you may want to start at 64 and go all the way to 4 instead of 8 for the last brush radius. Here, uh, the reason why I, uh, I'm using uh, two, uh, two brush radius radiuses for 8, it's because, uh, let me try to explain with the tablet again. So this one, the 8, with the 0, the brush, I'm using this brush. 
and that brush if you look if you go back to my blog you can see it but that brush kind of looks like it's very long looks like this so that's the brush the problem is that that brush uh, for some pictures that uh, it may not it may not be uh, accurate enough it kind of overshoots so sometimes uh, you may want to correct it using a, uh, a, uh, a brush that's smaller in uh, length so that's why here I'm doubling this line using a different brush and that different brush is uh, which I call it half width which is exactly what it is so this is uh, of course so this is the what I call the width for the brush and this is of course the height so this is this is this one and that one is the same but cut in half so it looks like this okay so that width is half that one and that that enables you that enables the painter to more accurately represent the the reference photograph so that's the only reason why I doubling here with a uh, with that width brush but I mean you don't have to do that I just do it in most cases it's going to look better doing it that way okay so now uh, let's load up the two output images in GIMP and uh, we're gonna we're gonna give some texture to that uh, output image so the output is uh, this one the canvas and this is the uh, the bump map so now let's go into GIMP this is GIMP 210 so this is the uh, the canvas image and that's the bump map the bump what I call bump PT the bump PT image so now we are gonna apply the bump map to the canvas image using filters map bump map so what I usually do is that I change the type uh, from linear to spherical and the depth I usually change that to to something more uh, more aggressive so I might go up to six but it depends on the, Im the, si the size of your image so let me just do that let me zoom in a, a little bit so we can see something uh, so here nothing happened I must have done something wrong so let's redo that filters map oh yeah I forgot something yeah here you have to click on this to put the bump map there so yeah double click okay I don't like linear I think it's too it doesn't look right so I go to spherical but I, imp I increase the depth a little bit like six it uh, depends on your image if your image is uh, even larger than this one you can go higher than that so this is the the canvas image after after being bump mapped and you can even enhance the effect you can use uh, the unsharp mask So it just uh, makes uh, increase the contrast, so you get a more pronounced effect. I mean, you can you can try that. I like it. So there it is. I mean, you, you, I mean, of course, you don't have to use the bump map bump map at all. You can just use uh, the 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 canvas RGB image as is. I mean, it's up to you. But I like giving texture. I like I like the the look of the, the bristles in my uh, digital painting so uh, I kind of like that look well there it is if you have any uh, problems any questions just uh, you know send me your your input files and I'll, I'll, I'll try to help you see ya